the numbers don't lie. Over 50% of people who get married in the United States end up divorced. And the number one reason for divorce, finances. What's up everybody, this is Prepper Princess. Don't forget to smash that like button and check out my book, Living on Almost Nothing, which you can buy on Amazon and I will leave the link in the description below. I just want to set up the scene for you. So you are a working father or working husband and you have been working 50 to 60 hours a week and your wife has not worked since you've been married for two years and every night you come home there is no food on the table there is laundry that's dirty the the lawn has not been mowed the car has not been washed the floors have not been scrubbed the shelves have not been dusted nothing has been done and then you go and check your credit card statement and find out that your wife of two years who hasn't worked since you've been married has been spending every single penny that you make so let's say that you are a happily married couple of two and both of you work and you decide that you want to get out of debt and start saving for retirement so you being the dutiful wife that you are you say hey we don't need new two cars i'll go ahead and sell my car and we'll put that towards our debt and then you start packing your lunch not just for you but for your husband and you start cutting the cable and changing your cell phone plans uh, calling insurance companies to get lower rates you start calling your credit card companies to see if they can offer a low apr or a zero balance transfer and you have done everything that you can think of in order to save money and then all of a sudden you've paid off all of your debt and you've accumulated eight thousand dollars and you and your husband have made the promise to decide next month that you're going to invest that money in an index fund so it can help grow your retirement and then a couple days later your husband comes home with a brand new truck and a brand new boat and a fifty thousand dollar bill how do you think that that would make you feel from a personal perspective, I can only talk in regard to my mother and father's relationship, which happened before I was born, but she gave me this picture of my father with a really cool, bright red sports car. And I was like, wow, that's like really cool. You guys were like super cool back in the day. You guys had it all together. And she said, no, uh, your father went down to the car dealership and bought the car without consulting me and he forged my signature. This is back in the day in the 70s when you could, I guess, forge your spouse's signature and it wasn't really an issue for the car company. But he forged her signature and my father uh, worked for, I wanna say something that had to do with the military and all of his money was gone as soon as he got it. Uh, I, I do know that he spent a lot of money on drugs but he didn't only spend his money he spent all of my mom's money as well which was not the deciding factor of why my mother chose to divorce my father but it certainly had a really large percentage of the pie in terms of what led to their divorce there were some other things but um, those are more personal and i don't really want to get into it but everybody has an issue with finances when it comes to relationships um i have always been not only the breadwinner in any relationship i've had i've always seemed to pick the ones that are not working at all and they give out this false persona like they're looking for work or they pay their bills through you know whatever creative means that they have and come to find out later their parents have been paying their bills all along and they're nearly 40 years old they have no no prospects no desire to ever get a job and i've always been the one who has completely taken over the finances and the thing the thing that is is really bad about that is that you're out there you are literally working 40 50 hours per week you are paying every single bill plus all of their bills and they contribute nothing and i'm not talking about a housewife who doesn't who doesn't contribute financially but contributes in all of the other ways 
uh, who cooks, cleans, mows the lawn, takes the car in for oil changes, drives the kids to school, takes them to soccer practice, homeschools, does all of those things. Um, unfortunately, in, in that aspect, I've always been uh, the one earning the money and I've always had the partner who has done nothing but watched football all day, every day, like five days a week. But you, what that does is it leads to internal resentment towards your partner and then it does eventually uh, lead you, yourself, to become a more angry, more agitated person because you are not benefiting anything at all from the relationship and you just be the, be, seems that you are the one giving, 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 giving and getting nothing in return. And that resentment really does build inside of you and not only does it build inside of you, it starts to come out in your personality. And this is where you, the significant other that you choose can either make you or break you financially. Now, the question always comes up is how to figure this out before you get married. Well, I have to tell you, you have to figure this out. I learned know from personal experience that you have to learn about the other person's finances before you fall in love. Because once you fall in love, any sort of logic or common sense just goes out the window. It no longer exists because I love this person and everything's just gonna work out because I love them so much and love is so much more important than money. Well, uh, eventually it's not gonna be more important than money. So yes, love absolutely matters, but you need to figure out the finances before you fall in love. And how can you do that? Well, when you're first dating, it's a little bit difficult to sort of start a conversation like, hey, do you have any debt? How much money do you have? How much money do you make? Are you financially savvy? <laughs> like those aren't really things that are appropriate to ask in a dating situation. So what I like to do is do it in a roundabout sort of way. First, I like to ask the person, you know, what do you do for a living? How long have you been there? And then once they tell you that, you can, you know, later on after the date has ended, you can Google up their title and Google up the average salary and figure it out based on the years that they've been working. Another thing is to look at their vehicle. So if their, if their salary that you've looked up does not really match with the vehicle that they own, then something's already not balancing out. So if they make an average with their title of 32,000 a year, but they're driving a $60,000 truck, something's wrong and that person is highly in debt. You also wanna ask about their education, like, hey, what school did you go to? And don't just say like, what school did you go to? You wanna ask them like, oh, what was that like? Did you like it? Would you go again? Do you wanna go back to school? Do you wanna learn with more things? And then again, you can look up what the standard debt for that type of degree is in that field and associate it with their title. Did they use their degree or did they go a completely different route? And then you have to look up the debt to income ratio, essentially. This is sort of like, people talk about this being like way too impersonal, that's not the right thing to do. No, this is the right thing to do for yourself and you need to come first, okay? You need to come first before you fall in love with a significant other before it becomes we. So you need to think about me before we, if that makes sense. I know that that makes sense and I know that this is uh, very logical and that is correct. This is logical and not emotional, but you have to get through your logic before you get to the emotion. And this is very important because if you don't take these steps and you and your significant other are not on the same financial page, it will lead to ruin. And I know there, there are gonna be so many people in the comments section telling me their horror stories uh, about how their relationships or their marriages ended because of financial difficulties. And this is not only with marriages. This also has to do with people who are leading into depression because they can't figure out their finances and depression leads into possible suicide or going into institutional, being institutionalized, uh, possibly committing crime and going to prison because they're trying to find a way, stealing for money, things along those lines. That's why I think that it is so important, so important in this day and age to teach financial education in, in our schools. This, in my personal opinion, is as important as physical health. Your financial health is, is as important as your physical health. Because again, this can lead to depression, uh, you know, self-harm, things along those lines. And if we taught financial education in school, it could potentially save lives and also could lead to a much more prosperous United States of America. 
So this is why I think that choosing the right partner can make you or break you in any sort of relationship. So it's imperative that you choose someone who has the same financial goals, dreams, aspirations, and also someone who is taking the appropriate steps to reach their personal goals. Don't forget folks, if you believe that you can or you believe that you can't, you are right. Prepper Princess out. I'm gonna get it. Give me that toy. Oh, that's my toy. That's, where are you going? Where are you going? That's my toy. Give me that toy. Give me that toy. Give me that toy. Give me that toy. Oh. Oh, you think you're all cool? I'm trying to run away from you. Give me that toy. Give me that toy. Give me that toy. Where are you going? Where are you going? Oh. Right there. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Oh, right between the legs. Cheater. I get the toy. I get the toy. What are you gonna do? You're not gonna do nothing. You're not gonna do nothing. Go get it. Give me that toy. Give me that toy. Oh, 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 between the legs. Again. Cheater. Cheater. I'm gonna get you. Give me that toy. Give me that toy. That's my toy. Go get it.